your makeup is going to change a little bit depending on the type of photos that you're going to have done. So for example, if you're going to a studio, there are certain makeup products that you should avoid if you're having your photos done inside. But if you're having your photos done outside, there's a few products that you are allowed to use that doesn't alter too much the look of your makeup. So as a general rule of thumb, when you're being photographed, makeup comes off a little bit, you could say. So there's like 10% of makeup that's not going to show up. So if you normally wear a BB cream, chances are you might as well just expect that your skin is going to look like there's no base on it whatsoever in the actual photographs. So just a little bit of tidbit of information there. It also depends too on like the photographer and what type of glass they're using to photograph you. Um, I'm not going to get too much into that detail because you don't need to know. You just need to know how to look good for your photos. I mean, come on. Like Christmas is coming up here, whether you're going to a Christmas party and you would just want to look good, which I am going to be doing holiday specific looks coming up here soon because we all need to look fabulous. And you know, number one key essential is getting your face ready. So if you are having your photos inside, a lot more detail shows up in your skin. So prepping and priming is going to be huge. So I'm going to start with my moisturizer, which is an Ulla Hendrickson one. And this is really weird because I'm wearing my contacts today so I can actually see myself <gasps> in the screen. So if I'm looking at you, it's because I can actually see what I'm doing. It seems kind of strange, but I put contacts in because I am going to be wearing false lashes today because I'm gonna give you that little tidbit of information now, is that lashes, there's not many things I insist on, but lashes are something I insist on for photos. And when I do uh, makeup for my clients, when I come, when they come in for it to have bleh, bleh, bleh. Oh my gosh. When my clients come in to be photographed, I, and when I do their makeup, they always, 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 unless they are naturally gifted with insanely long eyelashes, they are wearing false lashes. Um, and usually even people who do have long lashes, depending on whether I put eyeliner on them or not, are wearing false lashes because you just need that little extra oomph. So first step, now that I have prepped my skin with moisturizer, is I'm going to go in and prep my eyeballs. And I'm using the Sephora Colorful Shadow Liner Matte. What shade is this? And pretty little thing, number 34. I love these as primers because they're cheap <laughs> and they get the job done. Though I tend to go through them pretty quickly. So, I mean, while they're cheaper, you're getting less. So, I think for primer, if you're really looking to save your money, the MAC pots are probably going to last you the longest. So now I'm going to set my eyes with one of the matte shades from the shade light palette. If you don't already, priming your eyes is pretty essential. So let's say you're getting your photos done at like five o'clock at night, but you're doing your makeup at like 12 at noon. Primer is key because otherwise your eyeshadow is going to crease and then it's going to look like you have greasy eyelids by the time your photo shoot comes around at five o'clock prime those eyeballs. So for today's look, I'm going to be using Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. Woo! Whoa, that light is really bright. I guess you can't quite fully see that well. Um, so for today's shadows, I am using Sauced Low Blow and Fuego and Scorched. So those are this one, this one. Ooh, camera focus. This one, this one, this one. And then this really pretty shimmer. Hopefully my fingers, I can't quite fully see it. So anyways, it'll all be in the information down below. So I am using two crease shadows because I just, I just want to. And I really want to make sure that my eyes are really well blended. And there's my dog trying to defend the universe because we have new neighbors and she doesn't like it. So number one, Actually, what not, what tip am I on number now? I don't know. Three, four, something like that. Holy, it looks like I 
destroyed my eyeball with shadow. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. So again, tip number, whatever, number one. So as a general rule of thumb, unless you want your makeup to stand out by itself, kind of go aim for like natural to like classy makeup. So the risk you run, especially if you're having family photos on, is that your makeup can distract from the photos. So if you have a really dark lipstick on and really heavy eyeshadow, it can just like distract from the environment. So if you have like a couple kids and you're getting photos and you're getting candles done with your husband, it could be like, whoa, makeup is the first thing you see instead of like you and your husband and your kids and how cute you are and all that stuff. So don't go too heavy unless you want to, which is totally fine. But um, even when I am photographing my clients, I don't ever go super heavy unless it's a very like dark moody look and they're wearing like really black and whatever, but that's for indoor portraits. It's not for outdoor candid family photos. So just keep that in mind. Same rule applies for lipsticks. So, you know, kind of aim for like neutral, darker neutral, you know, a berry or something, but just not. Also, it's going to depend too on like your photographer's editing style. So if your photographer edits really dark, don't go dark because you'll look, it'll look even darker in the photos when you get them back. So keep that in mind as well. Now, you don't have to do, obviously, the same look that I'm doing. I really just wanted a little bit of warmer shadows for my eyes because for the photos that I'm going to be taking, I'm wearing a black dress. So I really just wanted a little bit of balance. I didn't want too many cool tones because black is considered a cool tone. Um, so I wanted a little bit warmer shades on my eyes. Again, too, because like these are going to be for our itchy nose. These are going to be for our Christmas cards. So I didn't want to look like deathly pale, I guess you could say. Um, but I mean, like if you're wearing a red dress, probably don't use the naked heat palette unless you really want to look super uniform. Um, you could go with a cooler tone and a warmer lip. So, you know, just think about your wardrobe when you're thinking about your makeup. We are going to go in with the darker shade and Fuego. It's like a really nice purple. And I am going to use this for my outer corner and I'm going to blend it up into my crease. And I did this technique in my last video. My dog is going to destroy my microphone. I did this same technique in my last video. Honestly, this is like my go-to neutral eyeshadow look. Because it gets you the definition that you want in your eyes without going overboard with liner. And if you haven't noticed by now, if you follow me on Instagram, I really don't wear eyeliner that often, which is odd because a couple years ago, I was like all over eyeliner. But um, it has to do with the fact that I don't have very long lashes. So if I wear eyeliner, it's like, boom, no eyelashes. And then I have to wear false eyelashes and I'm not doing that all the time. So in order to make my life easier and also because it saves time, I tend to just stick with eyeshadow. Which is totally fine. You do you, girlfriend. If you're gonna, if you do plan on wearing false lashes and you have never worn them before, do like five practice runs, okay? So if your photos are like tomorrow, you're gonna put them on today, take them off, put them on again in an hour, take them off, put them on again tonight. Because it is like something's attacking your eyeball and your eyeball just has to get used to it. So you really just need to practice. First, for photos. If you are having your photos done inside, be careful on wearing super pigmented glittery eyeshadow. It can be very distracting if you're getting your photos done inside. So, and it can like, it can just be really distracting. So, and it can like off balance depending on the way that person edits. So, uh, photographer edits. So kind of just, you know, go for normal shimmer like, don't go for, like, a super thick glitter. Again, unless you're specifically having makeup photos done, kind of just ease up, like, neutral, you know? All right, next, primer. Now, I use this Dr. Brandt Pores and More Performance Stick as my primer um, because it's 
awesome. And just over the last year, my pores have been like, you're getting older. We need to get bigger. So I'm like, mm, no. Nah. So I use this stuff, which it really stinks because this only comes in one shade. But I put it in the areas where I have the large pores. Um, and I kind of like it too because it does... Um, add a little bit more coverage in those areas so I just put it on and then I smooth it out but it really does <gasps> oh it does mask those pores let me tell you honey so if you really want now I have used the Smashbox to where my dog went off to oh cool she's on the sofa behind me whatever um if you are looking for a very oh another thing too is that this doesn't dry my skin out so that's the risk because dr brandt does have a primer but um i find that it, it's drying so i can't wear it because i have dry skin but um you can try the performance stick if you feel like you're in like the medium neutral whatever shade range um or you can pour try his pores no more primer um because it's awesome so i'm using the clay stick foundation so tip number whatever number we're at 10 i don't know full coverage foundation my friends full coverage foundation is super important because like i said if you're the camera does take off a little bit of the makeup so you just want to look flawless now you don't need to go cap on d locket foundation full coverage okay you can get like a medium you know coverage foundation medium to full next up is contouring now if you don't normally contour you can totally skip this step it's entirely did my lashes go on the floor great for me though i have gained weight because i'm pregnant and so i I'm contouring my face. Um, yeah, normally I have only ever powder contour because time and I don't know, I just don't really need to liquid contour. But for photos, I do feel like the liquid contour gives you a little extra oomph, but doesn't look so much like contouring. So I'm going to use the Tarte Pro Glow Palette because there's one um, liquid cream shade in here and I like it and I like that it's not super orange so I just went in with like a large shader brush and I'm not going to contour my nose because I don't care about my nose um but I am going to contour my cheekbones and I'm going to go in like a c shape so you guys cream contour is not really that scary <laughs> It might seem super scary. It is super, super easy. The biggest thing is getting the right cream shade and um, blending it out. So I'm gonna take my beauty blender and all I'm gonna do is I am going to just dab, 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 dab. You just keep blending that stuff until it looks like you can't see any more lines. So now I'm going to go in with the blush and I am using a Wet n Wild um, blush. This one is one of my favorites. My friend sent it to me and it's awesome. If you are having your photos done inside, skip the highlighter. It can make your face look very shiny and oily but because i'm having my photos done outside today i am going to put highlighter on because really it just adds to the glow to the face it's just the way the light looks inside versus outside that's the only difference so i'm going to use the pro glow palette and i'm going to go in with lit because it's a really nice gorgeous neutral shade ish next step i'm going to go and do my brows so just a really quick note i bought a new brush i bought the brush that anastasia recommends to use with dip brow life changing life changing i don't even know why i've waited so long to get it i'm like what have i been doing my entire life like i've been an idiot like an idiot not using this brush it is so thin so also if you want really precise liquid eyeliner <laughs> this honey is going to be your friend but it all makes sense now because she uses dip brow to recreate strands in your brows so obviously if you want to recreate hair like stroke you need a brush that's shaped 
as thin as a hair line. So that's what this brush does. And it really totally like you will not get a painted on look with this brush. If you use a proper brush, it just won't happen, which is crazy town. So now we're going to go in and curl the eyelashes. I do curl my eyelashes, even though I wear mascara, um, or false lashes, I mean, because my eyelashes are very stick straight. So, um, they just don't blend well with the false lashes if I don't curl them. Okay, so I already cut my lashes, but if you are wearing a new pair of lashes, you will want to measure them um, against your eye and cut them accordingly. So I already cut mine and I wore them yesterday, so I'm just going to peel the glue off and reuse them again today. So I just, it's really hard to do this up here because normally I do it to make sure I don't get any on my pants. I dropped a huge thing on my dress yesterday and now I'm going to have to get glue remover joy so I try not to put too much glue on you really don't need an overly excessive amount this glue is pretty good um duo always says like oh wait 30 seconds for it to dry that's a lie it takes like a minute and a half for me because otherwise the eyelash is gonna like slide around and then there's glue all over my lid it's super annoying so now we wait You want to get the lash as close to your la natural lashes as possible. So I hope you guys found this tutorial super, super helpful. I'm going to be having all the information on my blog post with all the tips and um, subscribe on my blog because you'll get these videos right to your email and be way easier um, and subscribe to my channel too, because if you subscribe to my channel, you're going to get a notification every time one of my videos goes live. Um, and also I don't, I'm not going to be doing videos every single week. I do talk about body positivity as well. So that is going to be through my blog. So if you really just need an uplifting um, conversation or reminder about, you know, surviving in this crazy society with, you know, a real woman's figure, um, whether that's skinny or whether that's a little bit overweight, it doesn't matter because everybody's a real woman. I am going to be talking about that as well. And if you guys think that I should do a video about that stuff, um, and if you want to hear me talk about it, let me know. I would love to talk about it. Um, I love, 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 love inspiring women to be confident in the bodies that they have. So that's it for today. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.